Hey, what's up guys? My name is Jordan, and welcome to What You Get When You Mix Childish Gambino with everyone's favorite neighborhood wall crawler. Welcome to Nerdvana. So I saw the premiere of Spider-Man Homecoming, which means today we're going to be talking about the big, huge moments, as well as some giant Easter eggs from the movie. So if you don't want to hear about that, uh, just get out. Get out. Get out! Now first off, I absolutely love this movie, uh, so much so that I watched it twice in one night. Uh, it's my favorite Spider-Man film so far and one of my top five Marvel movies, especially because Tom Holland was spectacular as both Peter Parker and Spider-Man. And that's something I don't think really came across as well in the previous versions. Uh, I liked Maguire as Peter and Garfield as Spider-Man, but the other aspects of their persona seemed lacking in the past. Just my opinion, uh, but not with Tom Holland. He killed this role, uh, and he's not a perfect Spider-Man. Uh, I mean, his portrayal is, but he makes mistakes a lot of mistakes, and in the end he proves himself when everything was against him. Uh, it's a terrific movie, and apparently he's been here in the MCU forever. Yeah, that little kid in the mask in Iron Man 2? That's Peter. I kind of think that's BS. Uh, I'm guessing they just went, sure, whatever. That can be Peter. Nice work, kid. Uh, anyways, a few things happen in the beginning of the movie. Uh, Toombs works as the owner of a salvaging company who was hired to clean New York until the Department of Damage Control takes over with the Stark Industries venture and basically tell them they're fired. Uh, the DODC are the ones that cleaned up Sokovia, DC, and New York, and were actually mentioned way, way back in the first Iron Man movie. This isn't my first rodeo, Mr. Stark. Just stick to the official statement and soon this will all be behind you. Man, good, good job, Marvel. Uh, and yeah, they're even getting their own TV show. So after that, Toombs and his men switch careers and they start creating high-tech hybrid weapons with things they secretly steal from the DODC without anyone noticing for eight years until Spider-Man notices. What's up, guys? Wait a minute. You guys aren't the real Avengers. I can tell Hulk gives it away. Anyways, the big Easter egg I want to talk about is Miles Morales, who is actually confirmed to be in the MCU in this movie. Uh, it's only in a single line from Donald Glover's character, but I nearly jumped out of my seat when I heard it. I didn't, though, because I'm courteous to the people behind me. I'm like the woman who kept kicking my chair. Screw you, lady. Uh, maybe I should have jumped. Uh, anyways, in the movie, Donald Glover plays Aaron Davis. Uh, he's most notable as a small-time criminal. Uh, he goes to Vulture's men for a weapon to hold someone up. And when the first Shocker talks about the high-tech weapons he has available, he mentions a pair of crawlers that slightly interest Aaron Davis more than the other stuff. Uh, and that's right before Spidey shows up to stop the sale. So in Spidey's mask HUD, you get a bit of info on Aaron's character. Uh, most importantly was his notable aliases. One was Brian Michael Bendis, uh, which is a clear nod to the comic book writer, Brian Michael Bendis, who helped create the character Miles Morales. Uh, and the other alias is the Prowler, hence his interest in those crawlers. Uh, he mentions to Spider-Man that he doesn't want Toombs' high-tech hybrid weapons in the city because of his nephew. And that's important because in the Ultimate Marvel comics, Aaron Davis is a career criminal that works with his brother, Jefferson Davis, uh, until he becomes reformed after becoming a father. However, Aaron continues his criminal work as the Prowler, but shows concern for his nephew, like Glover does in the movie. Uh, now, the big thing is that Aaron Davis' nephew in the comics is Miles Morales, aka the new Spider-Man. So we just got a nod to Miles Morales in the movie, and I cannot be happier. We don't know when he'll show up, but I just can't wait to see him. And Aaron Davis is also a really big deal because he's the reason Miles gets his powers in the first place by unknowingly bringing the spider that bites him. So yeah, that was pretty great. Moving on, we get some notable villains that Toombs works and meets with. Uh, there's Jackson Bryce, who calls himself the Shocker. He dies by the hand of Toombs in the movie, and Herman Schultz takes his place. Jackson Bryce is notable for being the Shocker in the spectacular Spider-Man TV show, and Herman Schultz is the Shocker in the comics, so it's a nice nod to both of them. Shocker's Gauntlet was actually made from Crossbones' Gauntlet, and we see a lot of tech from past movies and shows like Ultron's head and his arm, uh, some Chitauri weapons from the Battle of New York, and even black hole grenades from Thor The Dark World. Uh, we also see Michael Mando, who is amazing in Better Call Saul. Uh, he plays a character named Matt Gargan, which is actually the name of the scorpion in the comics. Uh, he also has a scorpion tattoo on his neck, so there's another nod to that villain. So the big spoiler in the film is Michelle, played by Zendaya, is actually MJ, Michelle Jones. Uh, at the end of the movie, she mentions that all her friends call her MJ instead of Michelle, uh, and I can't wait to see her and Peter together, if she actually is the MCU replacement of Mary Jane that Peter ends up with, 
But hey, it's MJ, and not this MJ. MJ. MJ? Call me Magic Kid. Also, none of this NBA stuff was in the film. Hey, thanks, man. Friend. What? We wanted to watch the game. So I'm somewhat sure that this is the MJ we know from the movies and the comics, uh, although she may also end up being Michelle Gonzalez from the comics. Uh, she's a lawyer that Peter has a one night stand with, uh, or this could be a completely new character, but I think they're going with her as a replacement for Mary Jane. I could be wrong, it's Marvel, they may go for another twist. I hope not, but you never know. Uh, she fits better with Peter in my opinion, she's incredibly smart like him, and they have such great chemistry in real life. And don't get me wrong, I love Kirsten Dunn's version of Mary Jane, but besides going to the same high school, they really don't have that much in common. Uh, it seems more plausible to me than the previous versions, just because they really do have stuff in common. Actually, for most of the film, she seems not to care for Peter or anyone. Although she quickly mentions the activities Peter's already quit for the Stark internship when he says he can't go to the decathlon, then she just plays it off by saying she's observant, not obsessed. And right after this scene... Hey, where are you going? What are you hiding, Peter? I'm just kidding, I don't care. Bye. She looks at Peter in a way where it's pretty obvious she has some feelings for him and cares. Uh, we all know that sort of longing look, and it's right after she says her friends call her MJ. So I'm excited for them in the future. It's a nice twist on the character. She's smart. She goes to compete in the DC decathlon with the team, uh, but she also goes to protest and also refuses to go to the Washington Monument because it was built by slaves. And I just love this character, and I can't wait to see more. Uh, she was inspired by Allison from The Breakfast Club and Lindsay Ware from Freaks and Geeks, both characters I absolutely love. And Zendaya absolutely killed this role. Uh, I don't care if she's Michelle Gonzalez, a brand new character, or a replacement for Mary Jane. I loved her, and I want to see more. So while she might be Peter's future love interest, his heart belongs to Liz in this movie. Uh, in the comics, Liz Allen is white, but Laura Harrier killed this role just like the rest of the cast. Uh, she seems like a real high schooler and nothing's really lost by changing her race. And it actually adds to the big twist that her father is actually Adrian Toomes, the vulture. Uh, it was something I really didn't see coming despite the trailers. You to understand, I'll do anything to protect my family. I know you know what I'm talking about. Uh, in the comics, she's not his daughter, but it was a fresh take and it worked really well and added a nice family element to the story. Uh, on the way to taking Peter and Liz to the homecoming dance, Toombs pieces together that Peter is Spider-Man. Uh, he thanks him for saving his daughter, but also tells him to forget about him being the vulture and everything he's learned about him in the business, or else he'll kill him. Uh, so naturally, Peter ignores that, and after Peter stops Vulture from stealing a crate of Tony's arc reactors from the crash plane, he ends up going to jail, so Liz and her mom go to live all the way on the other side of the country in Oregon, uh, so I doubt we'll ever see them again, but you never know. Uh, so that's the big twist. Uh, after Peter saves the Vulture in the final battle on the beach and leaves him for the police, uh, Tony asks him to move uptown to the Avengers headquarters and even shows him the brand new Spider-Man suit he made for him. Uh, not this one, which is awesome. It's a brand new one, and it's got this giant blue spider over his chest. Uh, it's very reminiscent of the Iron Spider costume from the comics, uh, just with a lot more blue. Uh, this may be the MCU version of the Iron Spider. It is very, very shiny, uh, but we don't see any of the four legs, but those were retractable in the comics anyways. Uh, Peter turns him down and says he wants to stay in Queens for a while, uh, which surprises Tony, but he respects his choice and sends him back the original upgrade suit that he took away after that fairy scene. Uh, Peter puts it on, and it feels like the Spider-Man we know and love is back. Then the camera pans over a few inches where Aunt May is standing in the doorway and yells, What the fuck?" Which ends the movie. Uh, it was awesome, and Marissa Tomei was incredible as Aunt May. She's easily my favorite Aunt May so far. Oh, and after Peter rejects Tony's offer, uh, Pepper comes out of a conference room filled with the reporters, and yes, she's back in the MCU, and he tells her that they don't have anything to announce now. Uh, it's a clear nod to the Civil War comics where Spider-Man reveals himself to a room full of reporters. Uh, anyways, Tony then asks Happy if he still has the engagement ring. Happy says he's had it since 2008 when the first Iron Man came out. Uh, he throws it to Tony, and him and Pepper go back into the conference room. So I guess they're maybe finally getting engaged, uh, and I can't wait. 
Uh, we also get some nods to past heroes in the MCU. Of course, Cap, who does a series of videos in his Avenger suit that the students watch. Uh, the plane that Vulture and Peter crash also has a number of noticeable items in it. Uh, Happy, who is promoted to asset manager, mentions it carries a prototype for Cap's new shield. Uh, possibly this one from Iron Man 2, or maybe a brand new one. He also mentions the old Hulkbuster armor and Thor's magic belt, which he can't pronounce. Uh, it's Megingjord or Megingord. I don't know. Uh, anyways, in the comics, it just makes Thor stronger than he already is, and that's going to be really important for the Infinity War movies. Uh, we also see a large crate of Tony's arc reactors, as well as the Mark 42 armor from Iron Man 3. Uh, so there were some nice callbacks. Also, the principal from Peter's High School is played by Kenneth Choi, who also played Jim Morita from the Howling Commandos in Captain America the First Avenger. Apparently, Principal Morita is his grandson, so I know it's not going to happen, but I really want him to meet Cap someday. Uh, we also get two really clear winks at Sam Raimi's Spider-Man. Uh, one was one Peter's best friend, Ned, who was one of the best parts of this movie, asked him if he ever stood on a really tall building and seen how far his webs will go. Kind of like McGuire does in the first film. Uh, and the other is in this elevator scene where Peter rescues Liz and the rest of the decathlon team. Uh, and his AI assistant, Karen, tells him that it's the perfect time to kiss Liz while he's hanging upside down. You know, kind of like the first Spider-Man movie. There's also a moment in the movie where Flash is on his way to the homecoming dance, and he's telling his day that their brand Xeno wasn't fresh. If that Mediterranean fish sounds familiar, that's because it's a reference to the Amazing Spider-Man movie. Uh, it's the fish that Peter eats with Gwen's family, where it's, you know, a little bit awkward. Uh, kind of an obscure reference, but it is there. I feel like Branzino. Who doesn't? Uh, one thing I also wanted to mention was how amazing the setting feels. Uh, Midtown School for Science and Tech is not your average public high school, and it feels so real. The teachers, the terrible and awkward student-run news, and the students all feel real. Uh, although some of these guys are in their 20s, they do feel like high schoolers, and being three years out of high school myself, I would know. And the school is so diverse like New York is. Uh, just in the high school, I saw a Muslim girl in a hijab and an Orthodox Jew. And having this be a science and tech school gets rid of all those annoying cliches and cliques. Uh, Flash isn't a big mean bully, he's just a rich asshole. Uh, him, Liz, Michelle, Ned, and Peter are all on the decathlon team, which is nice. Uh, anyways, I just had to throw that in there. Uh, everything feels so natural, and that's something I really took away from this movie. Uh, and last but not least, there's two post-credit scenes. Uh, the first shows Tombs in Prison, where Scorpion comes up to him and says he's gonna kill Spider-Man, and that there's a rumor that Tombs already knows who he is. Tombs responds with, if he knew who Spider-Man was, he'd be dead already, so it looks like he'll be keeping Peter's identity a secret, probably because he saved his life, or maybe because he wants to take revenge himself. I don't know. Uh, the other post credit scene is after all the credits, and it's a continuation of the series of motivational and information videos we see from Captain America. And in this one, he talks about the importance of patience and how something isn't always worth waiting for. Uh, it was hilarious, I loved it, and that was the movie. And Hulk. <sighs> Smash. Uh, but anyways, that's pretty much all for me. I'm sure I missed some Easter eggs and other stuff. But if you like this video, you know the buttons press. Drop a comment or question down below if you'd like. And thanks for watching. Uh, and more than anything, stay nerdy. Yeah, we don't really it's... need to start a conversation. Okay. Cap, Captain. Big fan of Spider-Man. Yeah, we'll talk about it later. Just. Hey, everyone. Good job.